Let's talk about what short selling is, how short selling works, the hidden costs of short selling, the risks of short selling, and also what a squeeze is. Because ever since we had the whole GameStop saga and AMC saga unfolding, I mean, this is when everybody talked about short selling, how can you benefit from falling prices and what is happening here. So today I will show you exactly what this is all about. So. Let's talk first about, about what is short selling exactly. And I want to bring up Apple here. Right now is trading at pretty much at exactly 150. And let's just say that you are bearish on Apple and you say, you know what? I don't believe that this company is coming out with new innovations. I believe that the Apple price will go down. And it really doesn't matter what stock you're using. I'm just using Apple because it is trading at a nice round 150, exactly 150, 80 right now. But let's just use this as an example. Let me switch over to my handy dandy notebook and illustrate a few things. So let's say that this here is you being happy and saying, you know what? I believe that Apple will go down. So I want to sell Apple shares. Now, here's the challenge. You want to sell Apple shares, but right now you don't own any of the Apple shares. So this is where you can ask your broker, hey, dear broker, you know what? The broker is not that happy. Are brokers ever happy? Maybe they are happy, but we, we say that this is not that happy. And uh, you say, hey, broker, could you please lend me some shares that I can sell to another trader. So we were putting an, another trader in here and this other trader is actually also very, very happy because he believes that Apple is going up while you believe that Apple is going down, that it is not worth the 150. So here is how it works. You are actually asking your broker, hey, lend me some shares. For this example, we wanna say, lend me 100 shares. Can I please borrow them from you? And the broker says, sure. And there are some costs involved and we'll talk about them in just a moment. And then you are just selling it to another trader who is buying it. So now you sold 100 shares. Now at some point, at some point, you have to give the broker these 100 shares back. And this is why the broker is requiring some so-called margin. And I wanna show you exactly what this means and what it looks like. So shall we just sell 100 shares of Apple? Let's do this. Let's actually go back here and I'm logging into my trading platform that is here with Tradier Brokerage. And let's just say that we want to sell Apple shares. It's super easy. It's an equity and we want to sell short. This is what this is called. Want to sell 100 shares and we just say, let's do this at the market. Or you know what? In order to have exactly our $150, Let's do this. So now I'm previewing this and let's see what happens here. So first of all, we are selling short and you see at this point, my broker is requesting half of the money that these shares are worth as margin. And this is absolutely normal because think about it. If I'm selling 100 shares and each share is worth $150, this would be $15,000. So this also, if you want to buy Apple shares, so going back to the other trader who wants to buy 100 Apple shares, he actually has to have at least $15,000 in the account. Now, here's the cool thing. My broker is giving me a break on margin, and this means a 50% break. So I only need to bring seven and a half thousand dollars to the table. So this is important to know. Let's talk about this margin here for a moment. So because there are two important margin terms that you need to know. Number one, it is the initial margin. The initial margin is usually 50% of the shares that you're borrowing from your broker. Then number two, we have a so-called maintenance margin, and we will talk about this in just a moment. But let's go back to the broker. Where is the broker getting these 100 shares from? The broker has actually some shares on his own that he can lend out to me. So he has his own inventory. He has other clients because there might be clients who have Apple in their portfolio for a long, long time, maybe in their retirement account, right? And so he can actually take these shares and lend them to you. Or if he doesn't have this, he can even call other brokers and say, hey, I need 100 shares for Marcus because he wants to sell shares that he does not own. Let's actually go and continue in our example and we go back here 
to our charts so that we see exactly of what is happening here. Here we are at Apple. When you're buying shares, the idea here is that you buy low and sell high. Now, if you are a short seller, if you are selling shares, this whole thing is flipped upside down. You want the stock to go down. So the idea is that you sell high and you buy low. So you sold Apple, you sold 100 shares at $150. So now let's say that Apple goes down to $130. So in this case, you can buy these shares back from somebody who wants to sell it at this point. What is your profit? Well, it is $20 per share times 100 shares. So this would be $2,000. So how much money did you make based on your investment? Well, is where we need to come back here. So we made $2,000. And as we just said, you only had to bring $7,500 to the table. So let's actually bring up our handy dandy calculator and we will see $2,000 divided by the $7,500. So you're making 26% based on your money. What happens now in this whole scenario? Well, at some point you're buying these shares back and then you're giving 100 shares back to your broker. This is how it technically works. And now you also know an example. So let's talk about this pesky margin again and what it means. The initial margin requirements, as you have seen, is 50%. Now we also have a maintenance margin here and the maintenance margin is 30%. So what does this mean in our example? Well, if we wanted to sell 100 shares of Apple at a price of 150, the value of this transaction is $15,000. So 50%, the initial margin would be $7,500. Half of this, the maintenance margin is 30% of this. So this would be $5,000 for the maintenance margin. Let's see what happens if Apple is actually going against you. And in order to do this, we're jumping right back on the charts and talk about of what happened if you sold Apple at 150 and now Apple keeps rallying. Let's say that now Apple goes up to $180. So what's happening since you are betting on a falling market and you now lose money. How much do you lose? You lose $30 per share. And since you have 100 shares, you're losing $3,000. So what happens to your margin? Well, this is where we're going back here. We had the $7,500 in initial margin, and now you're losing the $3,000. So this is getting reduced by $3,000, meaning that now your margin is only at $4,500, which is below these $5,000. And now you're getting this pesky margin call that everybody is dreading. And you see, it doesn't really matter if you are selling shares or if big guys doing it, hedge funds are doing it or pension funds are doing it or whoever does it, right? I mean, at some point, if the stock goes up, they are getting a margin call and you would also get a margin call. And now there are actually two options that you can do when you're getting a margin call. Number one, you can wire more money into the account. And uh, how much exactly would you have to wire? Well, the difference here between 4,500 and 5,000. So you would have to wire at least $500 in the account. So that's not a big deal. The problem starts if Apple keeps going up. What is the other possibility that you have when you sold it back? When you sold the shares, you can buy them back, but now at a loss and you would realize this $3,000 loss because you see at any given time, you can buy it back from another trader who wants to sell with you because this is how trading works, right? I mean, there's people who want to buy and there's other people who want to sell. And this is why we have the market because we all have different opinions. Now we will talk about what happens here if this stock just keeps going up because this is when this so-called short squeeze take is happening. But before we do this, let's talk about the costs associated with selling shares. There are actually three different types of costs associated for this. The cost is first and foremost, 
you have to pay the broker interest rates. The interest rate is on the margin that you're borrowing from your broker because you're borrowing shares from the broker. So here in this case, it would be on the seven and a half thousand dollars. Now, how much is this? This varies by broker. Right now, most brokers are at around 5.25%. Some brokers are less, some brokers are more but let's just say you have to pay 5.25%. Now here's the good news. You only have to pay this interest rate during the time when you are short these stocks. So if you take the seven and a half thousand dollars times 5.25%, this would be $393 per year. Now here's the deal. If you only have these shares for 30 days, you would have to pay less. You only pay 30 days of the year. So a 12th of this, which would be around a little bit more than $30, maybe around $40. So, but you have to keep this in mind. Number two, this is if the shares are hard to borrow, and this is where it says HTB, hard to borrow, you might have to pay your broker a borrowing fee. And this is also what each broker decides how much this will be. So please check with your broker how much this borrowing fee is. This is typically not for easy to borrow shares, but it is for HTB, hard to borrow shares. Finally, here is the last thing. You actually might have to pay dividends. What does this mean? Well, as you know, when you own shares, sometimes you're getting paid dividends. Usually they're being paid quarterly. Some stocks or ETFs pay them monthly. So if you are short the stocks, you're not collecting dividends as you would when you're actually buying shares. Now you're on the other side. And if you're on the other side, this means that now you have to pay dividends. Again, this is usually not a whole lot and you don't have to worry about that too much. You just have to keep this in mind that these all are costs that are associated with when you are actually shorting stocks. So let's go to the last two points here. Let's actually talk about the risks here. The risks is that you actually have unlimited risk. Let's go to a different stock. Let's just say right now that you are bearish on Groupon. So you have been looking at Groupon recently. It is trading at $25 and you believe, you know what, Groupon will continue to go down. And again, this is where you would sell short at around $25 right now. First of all, think about it the other way. If you would buy Groupon, let's just say you're buying 100 shares of Groupon and you're buying it for $24.49, you get the idea, your maximum risk is $2,500 because Groupon cannot go below zero. I mean, the worst thing that can happen to Groupon or any other stock that you're bearish on, it can go to zero. So your risk here is limited to $2,500. However, what happens if you're short Groupon and if let's say Groupon rallies up to $65? In this case, you would lose $40 per share times 100 shares. This is $4,000. Think about it, Groupon could actually go much, much higher. As you can see, at some point, if you're looking back, Groupon was actually trading 260. What happens if it goes up to 260 and you sold it for 25? This is where you would lose $235 times 100 shares, so you would lose $23,500. So as you can see, your risk is almost unlimited. So let's talk about this so-called short squeeze. And in order to do this, I'm bringing up the most famous stock for short squeezes, which is GME. I'm switching to a daily chart and we are zooming into what happened in the beginning of 2021. So here is what happened. GME at some point was trading at $40. As we said, you could have shorted it or the big guys are shorting it. A few days later, as you can see, it went up to, what is this here? Around $160, meaning that somebody that shorted GME would have lost $120 per share. So if you're just talking about 100 shares, this would be $12,000. And this is where you would get the dreaded margin call. So meaning that you have two possibilities. You can either put more money into the account or you're buying it back at a loss. And this is where at some point 
people said, you know what? I do not want to put more money in the account. I am actually buying it back. So think about it this way. This is where, again, this so-called short squeeze, this is what's happening. And I'm just writing it on here so that you know what it means. So we have people who already want to buy GME just because they believe in this stock or they want to stick it to the man or for whatever reason, right? So we have some people who regularly want to buy it. And now we also have all these short people, all the people who are short, who have to buy it back. So you basically have a double whammy. So this is why there's a lot of buying coming into the markets right now. And what happens when you have a lot of buying coming into the markets? Well, this is when prices are skyrocketing, shooting up. And this is what happened here with GME. This is why at some point GME went all the way up to $480 from initially around $40. This is where, you, as you can imagine, you would lose $44 per share. So if you traded 100 shares, $44,000. And this is what a short squeeze is. I think it's very important that you know what it means to go short a stock because sometimes it is very, very appealing to say, oh my gosh, this stock is garbage. I'm betting on a falling market. But as you can see, there are costs involved and there are risk involved. The better way to do this would be buying a put option. And I'll talk about this in my Options 101. It's a free playlist. I'll link to it in the description here. Or you know what? I'm also linking it, uh, linking to it right now here or here. We will see. Anyhow, now you know what it is and I hope this helps. Take a look at the other video right now so that you know how to trade options and I'll see you in the next video.